Welcome to Elf Hosted. You could survive a zombie apocalypse. This video will demonstrate how to use AIO streams with NZBDAV to stream media from any Usenet provider. For starters, we're going to need to use AIO streams proxy power. So we're going to configure an environment variable. Launch Elfbot, find AIO streams, click the three dots, go to environment variables. And our environment variable, which you can also get from our docs, is going to be AIO streams underscore auth. And the values are a user and password separated by a colon. You can have multiples, but we're just going to use one. So I'm going to copy this and paste it here to make it easy. Add it to the form. My AIO streams auth now is user one, user one password. Saving him. This will cause AIO streams to restart. While that's happening, let's set up NZB dev. So from the dashboard, we launch it. We configure our new account. Use whatever password you want. And let's go into settings. For Usenet, we're going to enter your own Usenet provider's details. In my case, I'm using Easy News. Enter the maximum amount of connections your provider allows. Many of them are 100. I think Easy News is 60. And connections per stream, this is variable depending on the size of the media, but I found 8 to be a good number. Save your change. Just notice this API key for SAB. We'll come back to this one when we set up AIO streams. Now, in WebDAV, we need to configure a user that AIO streams will use when it's pulling content through NZB Dev. We would recommend just using Elf Hosted and Elf Hosted. NZB Dev's web dev endpoint is never exposed publicly in this design, so it doesn't need to be a secure password. And save. Those are the minimum changes in NZB Dev. Let's move over to AIO Streams. From your dashboard, launch AIO Streams. We'll start an advanced setup. Go to Services and find NZB Dev. Configure it. Your URL will be NZB Dev port 3000. We'll leave the public URL blank. That's a, a more advanced config. It is possible, but we're going to rely on AIO Streams proxying. Username and password for web dev, we've established those are going to be elf hosted. And AIO Streams auth token is the token we set up in the beginning for proxying, which is this value here. Copy the whole thing, user and colon and the password, and paste it into AIO Streams. Save. Now you have a service in AIO Streams, which is capable of streaming from Usenet. Next, we need to find a way to find your content. Go to Add-ons, go to the Marketplace, and find the NewsNab built-in add-on. Configure that and name it for your indexer. Paste in your indexer's URL and your own particular API key. We're not going to enable proxy auth in this case because our proxying is handled on the NZB Dev service end. And down at the bottom, we will turn on force query search because this makes the query more broad and matches more results. Click on install and we're done. So to create a basic config, we're going to set our own password. This can be whatever you want and create. Now go to install and install into Streamio. Paste your URL, choose to install and we're done. Now, if I was to do a search in Streamio, and I found content. AIO Streams has queried my provider, found a Usenet based result, and if I click it like this, That was a real-time play. We didn't skip anything, so you saw how long it took to start the stream. If we were now to look at NZB Dev while it's playing, we'll see active Usenet connections, and under the queue history, we'll see the file that is downloaded and is now being streamed. Occasionally, you may see bad downloads here. 
a Usenet file that has missing articles, in which case the stream won't play. So bear in mind this is still very much of a cutting edge solution. It works very well when it works, but you shouldn't expect it to be as seamless and smooth a process as Real the Brit or Torbox yet. Happy streaming!